The world we see with our senses may satisfy some, but there are those for whom it will never be enough. Those seekers of knowledge and perfect understanding will always be driven deeper and deeper into the far reaches of knowledge, until at last there lies only a single door before them. And those whose mission is true will happily pass through the last door. Jeremiah Devitt had thirsted for knowledge of the world beyond humanity's senses since his childhood. He found like-minded individuals at his boarding school near Aberdeen, each ready to tear back the veil and see what most would fear to look upon. Anthony Beechworth, Alexander Dupree, Hugo Ashdown, and Jeremiah Devitt, the four witnesses. Along with Father Ernest Glynn, a renowned theologian who oversaw the proceedings. The five injected themselves with a serum of Anthony Beechworth's invention. Cribbed from a number of alchemical treatises and his father's own research notes, the serum Anthony created was unrefined and risky. The results of the experiment were undoubtedly horrific. The five of them drew the ire of something that night, the Cymurg, the King of Birds. This creature was an immense and timeless being, tasked with guarding the path beyond the veil from any who might intrude. In daring to glimpse beyond the mortal realm, each of them tied themselves to this great bird. Although they all survived the encounter, each of them was forever changed in some way. Father Ernest slowly went insane, first fanatically relying on the strength of his faith to protect him from the power of the Cymurg. He eventually began to worship it. By the events of the game, he was regularly sacrificing the patients at his hospital, converted from the boarding school that had once been there, to the creature in hopes of gaining its favor and recreating the events of that fateful night. But for the four witnesses, another path lay ahead of them. Despite the catastrophe of their previous efforts, their thirst for knowledge had not been satisfied. Led by Jeremiah Devitt, they formed an organization known as The Playwright a cult dedicated to crossing the veil and discovering the deepest secrets of reality at any cost. And cost them, it did. As they experimented and worked to refine the serum that had given them a glimpse of the world beyond, the stresses of the serum took their toll on the members. The serum itself was merely a catalyst, inducing a form of primal fear beyond what an average mind could comprehend. Only in a state of complete terror could the last door be opened. The stress of it killed Hugo Ashdown, and scoured the memories from Devitt's mind. The guilt of those lost caused Anthony Beechworth to take his own life. Alexander remained steadfast and worked to return Devitt to his former state, rekindling his passion. He slowly guided Devitt back into the organization, helping him retrace his steps to regain what he had lost. But what lay beyond the veil that made the members of the playwright claw so desperately past the physical world? Just beyond the final curtain lay the first language, the primordial words that made the universe. Whoever knows this language could speak anything they desire into reality. The physical world that humans know is but a shadow or reflection of the true world that lies beyond the veil. Each pure truth becoming muddied and less detailed as it strays further from the source of the first language. But beyond the veil lies a land of pure truth and objective existence. At the center of that lies a means to alter or remake the world as the user sees fit. As the members of the playwright would put it, true philosophy. But as Devitt finally found his way back to Zai Ilithel, he was changed from his journey. He decided instead to seal away the first language forever, sacrificing himself so that none could be tempted to draw upon its power again. There are some who say it was not Devitt himself, but his doctor, John Wakefield, who sacrificed himself to put an end to the madness. Even after all the actions of the playwright faded into history, there are rumors still that the other members of the playwright remain in Zaillithal still, that they still seek after their Promethean goal with the intensity that only those in a world of pure thought can. Unbound by the weakness of the flesh, they strive still in that land beyond the mists, searching ever for a way to grasp the final truth in their hands. <laughs>